Good afternoon, good afternoon, welcome back. Um, this is episode 684, and the topic today, you know what, I'm not gonna say what it is, you have to read the title, because I, I wrote it down and it was like, that's, um, oh, you're feeling you should, you shouldn't be single. <laughs> I wrote it in a hurry, so <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> so I'm gonna play with it because it's talks about shouldn't, can't, and, and try. Um, because frankly, it's time to wake up the language you're using. So before I dive into this, let me introduce myself and so you know who I am, what I'm about, um, and why I'm doing this talk. <laughs> My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and international speaker, um, and relationship attraction expert, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also helping women get empowered and inspired. That's a whole other topic. Um, because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what inspires my talks every day and also why I do these talks and, inspire, and informs my work. And these talks are called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart, which I've done every day now for over, well, I've done for over two years ago and done every, every day for uh, almost two years. Um, and so we're up, uh, today we're at episode number 684. And the topic today is about the ways that you perhaps frame and language your choice about relationship. Like you shouldn't be single and you're gonna try and find love. And what was the other one? The third one was the, um, you can't seem to find, the, the, you can't seem to find the one you want, something like that. So these, these three starting points are really what I'm wrapping up from something I talked about last week. And by the way, yesterday's talk is still, still provoking interest and interesting feedback. I may go back into that one tomorrow, I'm not sure, but I need to take a break from it because it's still percolating. Um, so if you wanna be shocked by my review of the Bible, <laughs> so to speak, I invite you to watch yesterday's, yesterday's broadcast. But today we're on a lighter topic. Well, we'll see where it goes. About the languaging that you might be using in your search for love, and it'll actually apply to every area of life because this is what I would call conscious use of language, or conscious use of words. Because first of all, conscious language is a, is a term a friend of mine uses, and I won't steal it from him because he's really good at what he does. But I'm talking about conscious use of language in the way you do your things in terms of love and relationship. The way I would use this, there's, there's a, a statement, I'm trying to remember where I heard it first. I know I've heard it in several places, but it talks about how your word is law, meaning that what we say becomes real. And that's gonna sound very metaphysical and very woo-woo, but it's really true, is that we tend to say, well, let me use another one, so obvious. Henry Ford is famous for saying, if you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. Because the truth is we are setting up our own reality by the words we use. So if you say you can't find love, that's the truth. Whereas if you said, I will find love, that's the truth. There is no difference, it's about what you tell yourself. So that's one part of it. So can't, try, and should have three I'm gonna cover in this one is a reminder from yesterday, from last week. I did a, uh, I put a post up yesterday that was a, a meme or a, or a chart, which talks about how we create our reality and also how we create, and this is the thing, how we create our states of being. Because if you keep telling yourself you can't have something or you should do something or you're gonna keep trying, and actually end up feeling pretty, pretty depressed. And in fact, a lot of people I know go through this place of suffering and upset and hurt because of what they tell themselves. So this is a nudge, a reminder, an encouragement to notice what you've been saying to yourself primarily, inwardly as well as outwardly, and what you're telling the world about yourself because it may not be the truth. Yes, the challenge is that sometimes we are not our best salesperson because we're not telling the truth about who we are to the world or to ourselves. And so we carry around these um, billboards and banners of declarations that aren't true and we convince ourselves of the truth of them, which is not true. So we're basically conflicted. So to use things like, you know, I, sh I should be doing this or I shouldn't be doing that. It's like, the, the reason why, uh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. If you haven't noticed, the word should and the word shoulder are very similar. And the reason I'm saying that is because I've, I remember hearing this in this workshop a long time ago and it made a lot of sense at the time, it still does, is that when you start shooting yourself, it's like you're putting weight on your shoulders. So I wanna use that analogy to give you something to think about. When you keep saying, well, I should do this and I should do that, it's like putting extra weights on your shoulders, pushing you down, down, down. That pressure can become physical, as in it can hurt your, you actually hurt yourself physically. I've actually seen people, well, I did, it, I did do it myself when I was going through a lot of um, inner turmoil, I actually put my back out. It wasn't because of my muscul muscul musculature, yeah, I think it's the right word. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't to do with, with 
with um, doing something, well, actually, I probably did myself, put myself in a predicament, but because I was running that judgment inside, and I'm going to tie this together in a second for this, that judgment actually ex exacerbated the risk of my injuring myself. Now, this brought up another piece. <laughs> That's the way, yeah. Let me say it this way, and I've heard, uh, there's an article I've been reading about this a while ago, it was really true. Your cells are listening. Like, say what? Our body is extremely good at listening to what we say. It follows instructions very clearly. So, I was, I was saying, do you want a cautionary tale or just tell you the advice? I'll do, I'll ask you for the, the, the advice. If you, I'll do, let you know, no, this is an important way. All right, sorry, I'm having an argument inside. So excuse me whilst I have an internal argument. I'll be clear in a moment. Okay, I'm just, I've just been sewing, seeing, seeing so many things throw up, throw up, wrong word bring up for me to use I was getting a bit conflicted so let me do it this way if you're someone who's ever done muscle testing you'll know about this if you haven't done muscle testing I'm gonna give you a little tip um, because you can do a thing you can actually do with a muscle test you can do a self test it's something I learned from one of my teachers and I actually use it quite often because I'm doing some clearing right now with some other old programming and the muscle testing is how I find out if it's true or not so when you muscle test, basically the one way you can do it for yourself is, is, what, it's using, is what it's called as a ring. So you take one hand, I, I, it doesn't matter which one it is, but I've been trying to use my dominant hand, using just holding two fingers together like that, and with the other hand, putting two fingers together and putting it inside. I, I do the other way around there, you can see it that way. So if I'm telling the truth, it will stay closed and I can't push it open. But if I'm lying, it will tend to open almost automatically. Now you can do it for yourself, and you can do it. You know, basically, you do it by muscle testing. You know what your name is and what your name isn't. I say your name is Bill, and you say your name is Bill, and it is strong. If you, say, if you say your name is Fred, and it's not that, it will go weak. So you can do it very simply. Muscle testing is basically proving that your body listens to you. Muscle testing is literally where, when you lie, your body feels weak. Now, for some people, this is a game changer. Because there are some people who have been lying to themselves for years and they wonder why they've not they've got no strength to do things, no willpower, no desire. This simple change can change your life for the better. And when you tell yourself you should do something or that you'll try or that you can't have something, which are all false statements actually. Yes, they're all false statements. Because they're either trying to convince you, deny you, or make you do something you can't succeed at. And you figure out which one I'm talking about and which one of those. Those three things are depleting phrases, depleting words, and they will lose or they will deplete your ability to actually be functional. Now, I'm passionate about this because so many people do this without realizing. I did for a long time myself. So my encouragement to you, first of all, first of all, actually learn muscle testing. It's simple to do. But by doing it, and that, that ring test I, I showed is a very simple way of doing it because what it does, it gives you a, an immediate feedback for yourself if something's lined up or not. So you can actually test if you believe something or not by doing the test. So use it, it's very useful. If you want to go deeper, I've got some other suggestions as well. But this piece I want to give you because it may be a simple thing to do, but the power of it is phenomenal. Here's why. When you say things to yourself that are lies, it's basically like punching yourself in the gut energetically. Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun, does it? But what I mean by that is that you're actually taking your own free will, your own power, your own authority, and stuffing it into a box. The power of your words influences your physical well-being. I'm not going to get into the whole conversation about how deep that can get or how bad you can make it, because I know some people actually have got themselves in pretty dire straits because of the way they keep telling themselves, the words they keep using. Because the other thing is, when you tell yourself things that are negative, when you limit yourself by telling yourself lies, you're doing is you're depleting your your mental by using mental programming that's not healthy you start to deplete your emotional well-being and something i learned a long time ago in my master's program is that our our physical self our mental self and our emotional self are all connected through basically like a um, a median and I'm, I'm giving you a fast sketch on this one but basically the way it works is that we have Positive and negative experiences on the physical level, mental level, and emotional level. Imagine those being layers on a cake. When you have, and the thing about it is that it all tied together. So if you have negative thinking going on, saying, telling yourself lies, making up stories about yourself that aren't true, as I mentioned, with muscle testing, it shows that it's connected to your body and to your emotions. 
by doing and saying negative things, you're going to create negative emotional experiences and then have negative physical experiences as well. So if you start saying, you know, I'm going to have a bad day, life sucks, I'm not interested. Your emotion is going to feel pretty down, depressed, and you're probably going to have a pretty shitty day because you're going to out picture into your world. It's a fancy word, by the way, out picturing into the world what you believe to be the truth, which is not true. In fact, we believe to be the way it is. It's not true. That makes better sense. So what's this all got to do with relationships? You might be wondering. I, I had to break this down the long way to get to the point, which is this. You're creating a reality every day by what you say to yourself. Now, you might say, well, I'm going to say I'm going to affirm a million dollars. Well, it might work. I don't know if it will. But if you're going to start judging on the smaller level, the more believable level, careful what you say to yourself. Bring it back to relationships and any part of life for that matter. This applies there too. If you are judging your ability to have love in your life, if you're judging your ability to be in relationship, if you're judging yourself because you're single, because some people do, you're actually making yourself less attractive. Oh my God. Because what you're doing is limiting your energetic. By lying to yourself, you deplete your energy, as I mentioned. And by depleting your energy, it makes you less visible. So you're not so attractive. This is another one of these tools in the, in the, in the tool belt of how to be more attractive in the world. I've done other talks about this, about being aligned to your mission, your power, which is a great way of doing it as well. But by being positive and supporting yourself, by affirming who you are as a, as a nice person, for example, by actually applying love to yourself and having self-love practices in place, which gives me a great segue to put in, I'll put a link in the comments for my self-love practice, by the way. But by doing that, it makes you more attractive. So the words you use will, will actually make you more or less attractive. If that doesn't scare you, I'm not sure what else will. <laughs> but I want to make sure I get this point because it really is a simple thing. It isn't about doing makeovers and other sorts of things. It's changing the words you say about yourself. If you say to yourself when you're out in public or before you go out in public, that I love who I am, I care about myself, I'm a loving person, and you just even this much believe yourself, you'll actually be more attractive to those you meet in the world. If you actually go inside and judge, say negative things like, you don't believe yourself, you don't trust yourself, oh, you screwed up again, you made mistakes, you start banging yourself over the head, metaphorically speaking, with a baseball bat. When you go out in the world, you'll be looking less attractive. You may, your shoulders may be slumped, you may be, feel, you may be less visible, you may be not even being aware of people around you. So these sorts of things will change the way you are received. So if you're looking for love in all the wrong places, this is one of the things you can do, is to change the way you talk to yourself and change the way you treat yourself, because that should go hand in hand. So I've given you like 17 keys in which are basically advanced level stuff right now in this talk. Well, it's gonna be a light talk, but apparently it didn't go that way, it went deeper. So hopefully you got some keys out of this because there's at least three things I can, that are in this talk, and you have to go back and watch to see what they were, that will change your way of being in the world. It will change your relationship with yourself, it will change your relationship with everybody else, and it will actually create a place in you that can be more effective in having what you want in all areas of life, not just relationship. Some of these things, by the, uh, by the way, are pretty clear that even though I'm, sp I'm putting them centric around the relationship conversation, a lot of these tools I'm giving you today especially are applicable to every single area of your life. Business, money, health, spirituality, family, anything. These reframes of language, these changing the way you talk to yourself can be extremely powerful to change the way you live your life. I think I made my point home. I've been drilling this pretty clearly. So again, I did talk about this in breakdown last week about can't, try, should, but, have to. There were five I used last week. This is three of the big ones. As a reminder that what you tell yourself is what you tend to believe. So why not tell you good news? Why not tell yourself wonderful news? Why not tell yourself affirmative things that you're, you can also believe that will change the way you feel? Because then when you muscle test, you'll be strong and you'll be a full whole and you'll feel healthy. And that for me is a great way of living life. So I'm gonna put a couple of links in the comments as reminders. Again, the self-love practice I just dropped a hint on earlier. And also a discovery session link that you can sign up for a discovery session with me because if you're having some challenges with the words you use, I'm pretty good at coaching my clients to change their language. It's one of my skill sets. And if you wanna change your languaging, something's good to get help from somebody else. Um, I think that's it. 
just scanning if there's anything else I didn't cover in this one. There's a lot, there is a lot deeper parts of this conversation I could bring up, but right now I want to give you just a, a, a slightly good appetizer, a first course on what this is about. If you want to go deeper, reach out to me, I can help you with that. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. As I mentioned, every day at 5 p.m. I do this talk now for over two years. If you want to watch my replays, you can find them on my business page and also on YouTube, so I can give you the links. If you want to join me live, it's 5 p.m. Pacific time on my, my, my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. We want to the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and then on my YouTube channel, which is also Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. Again, I'll put links in the comments for the two things I mentioned, and hopefully this has been of value to you. Please feel free to share this with anybody you think should see this. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments about this, please put them below in the comments, either here or on YouTube. Well, if you're watching YouTube, you're watching it here as well. Um, and I'll respond later on. Um, I appreciate you being with me as always. I hope this has been of help. And as always, take care of yourselves. Back again tomorrow on another topic. Maybe it'll be a re revisit to what I talked about yesterday. Um, if you are a Bible skeptic, watch yesterday's broadcast. If you're a Bible fanatic, don't. <laughs> I'll uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.